Welcome to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. We'll talk season two, episode 11 of Supernatural. Liz will tell us all about her haunted shopping network. And Diana will talk about how she's going to mend her will so her spirit cannot be attached to a creepy fucking doll. All right, okay. let's do this. This week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast, we're going to talk about season two, episode 10, Playthings. AKA those fucking dolls. Creepy fucking dolls, man. Yeah. So how are you? I'm good, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> that was my subtle hint that Diana forgot to introduce herself, but it's okay. We all know who she is. Sure. Yeah, I'm Diana. Hey, Liz. There hey, go. I'm Liz. There we go. We got it done. Woo, woo, look at us. We are on top of shit after a, a very, very long <laughs> weekend together where, uh, yeah, can't drink like we used to. No. No, no it hurts. It hurts. It, it hurt a fun. lot. We, had, we went to a punk rock show. We drank all of the beer. And then we went to another bar and we did shots because that's a great idea after midnight. Um, and then, uh, and then we got in the pool and drank some more and then it was really late. <laughs> yeah. I also puked in my hand in the bar, like a lady, because somebody gave me a shot of warm vodka yeah, and of that's not okay. Who, why the fuck? Like, just like, did I do something to this bartender? Why do you hate me? Like warm lemon and, and was, warm yeah, vodka. I like. And that's to be fair, mean. that was fairly early in the night. You weren't yeah. even intoxicated. It was just foul. Yeah, no, it was, that was just a foul, like, crap, what did I do? I hate you. <laughs> and I did that because I didn't want ha that to happen if I was shooting whiskey. Because I was like, nope, I'm too old now. I can't I can't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, give me a girly vodka drink. <laughs> okay. And then, of course, like, someone, like, everybody saw it. I'm like, thanks, guys. Yep. Cheats in my hand. The lady yeah. classy. Yeah, you you hit it you hit it pretty well, but uh, yeah. So we got to see Dog Company and Sniper Sixty Six and uh, Antagonizers ATL. So two uh, Dallas or two Texas punk rock bands, one Dallas, one Austin, and one out of Atlanta, um, over at a an interesting venue. And then went over to um, uh, Charlie Star Lounge new bar in Dallas, where we finished off our night. And they had a great DJ and got to do some swing dancing. So it's kind of a nice balance of a little bit of everything for our Saturday night. Yeah, out. we exercised. We worked out. I danced. Yeah. I danced. You danced so. And then you went swimming. That's totally exercise. Yep. Yep. All those calories <laughs> that I count. And then, oh my God, then on Sunday, we went to Medieval Times. We, we all wore our amazing crowns, and I was too hungover for their feast. You know what's not good when you're really hungover? Eating greasy chicken with your hands. Um, things I don't <laughs> recommend. If you want to vomit, like, hey, here's this bird that we cooked for a very long time, and why don't you pick it up and eat its greasy skin with your hands? You'll feel great. It'll look yeah. good. I mean, I mean, it's basically like rotisserie chicken. I mean, that's it's just like that's pretty much what the meal is. And yeah, that was plus, I mean, we I, also, plus we also had like tacos like an hour before we went because we really needed to eat immediately. <laughs> it was one of those like, no, no, we need to eat right now. And then we'll get yeah. ready to go to eat more. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I, you know, I won the Green Knight's favor because I am the ladiest of them all. Really just my tits were hanging out. And I think he was just like, I can see your bra lady. <laughs> she seems <laughs> desperate. Let's give her, <laughs> let's give her the shitty carnation. Yeah. Well, and then, and then our night, our night did get, get well killed. He, yeah. He got killed. Our night got killed. He didn't just lose. He got fucking killed by the evil what? night. I mean, it, he got hit in the, the stomach with a sword, I think. I don't know. But yeah. it was it was an exciting time. Uh, I've never been in medieval times before, and I thought it was fun. So, yay. So, and I got to wear a fancy crown. 
even yeah, though it wouldn't stay in my head. Well, it yeah. looked cute. It looked cute. And you accidentally thematically dressed because you were wearing a crown with green accents, a green dress and green bracelets. And then we got assigned to the green night. It was perfect. So yep. there we go. I don't know. So other yeah. than not being other than being too hungover to drink a shit ton of awful Woodbridge wine, um, it was it, or enjoy the food, but foods, whatever. Anyways, it was a fun afternoon for sure. Yep. Uh, we got to yell. Diana got to do her her your trademark. What's your trademark? I don't know if I want to do it in the microphone. It's real loud. They'll just like no. it. I'm, I try to channel the the old witch and well, the, the old lady in Princess Bride and <laughs> do the boo. It's been my favorite thing to do and re yell real loud. I like yeah. my, I've thrown my voice out there before doing that. I almost did it this time too. Yeah, I, we were just yelling the most inappropriate things, and I don't know how like we did not get like yelled at by people with children and yeah. just, you know. You know, but I mean, what do you expect when we go to medieval times? I mean, yeah, you know, I, I, at least I, I, on a plus, it's probably good we weren't drinking. It would have been worse. <laughs> and I was like, that was our sober yelling. I can't imagine like how many times I would have told them to go fuck themselves if I had been drunk, you know? Yeah. No, it was good times though, for sure. It was so. a medieval time. Medieval times. Milady. <laughs> Milady was ye old trash. Ye they have trash. like, yeah, and any like all your straws, you know, it's for your uh, classic medieval daiquiri, um, which I had a virgin because I was not drinking anything else. I was like, I was like, oh, can I have that strawberry daiquiri? No, 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 don't put any alcohol in that. I just just <laughs> want, I just want the frozen drink because we yeah, drove I just by want a Slurpee, but they don't have those here. So just well, we drove by a Seven Eleven, and I was like, Slurpee. Oh my god, that would be so great right now. And then I was like, oh, that looks like a Slurpee. Like, no, don't put any rum in it. No, 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 no. And and then our, our friend got the rum and he was like, oh, he was not hesitant about it. It could have made me feel better. I don't know. Maybe I should have drank, but it also could have made me vomit all over the green night. That would have been bad. Yeah. Been She's bad. vomiting green. But they, had pretty horse <laughs> <laughs> they had pretty horses and then the falcon and that's what the falcon says. But yeah, so it was a good time. Good time. I feel like we need all need like a week of sleep to recover because we're old. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was Sunday night. We were supposed to go out to the golf bar and go dancing. But they were like, no, nah, I think we're, I don't know. What do we, what do we end up watching? We just like stayed in and watched TV. Yeah. And that was just like, yep, yeah, we're old. That's what we're well, going to do. Well, sticking with the medieval times theme, we did finish the Miracle Workers season two. So that was very apropos with what we were doing for the day. Thematic, if you will. And then we, uh, then we started watching, I think we were watching Monster Garage. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we we watched a a Daniel Radcliffe show, and then we watched Monster Garage, and then judged everybody because that's what we do. But it was a good time for me. Always, right? yeah. But yeah, so that was our uh, outings uh, and fun. Um, it was in uh, early celebration for Liz's birthday. By the time this, by the time you're listening to this, it will have been her birthday. So. My birthday is on like three hours or something. So, so, so yeah. Um, uh, everybody wish her a happy birthday if you get the chance. Um, and uh, yeah. So, what are you drinking? Are you, I am, I am drinking uh this Carbach um ranch water, hard seltzer, original flavor, which happens to be lime and agave, or uh, agave original agave lime. Excuse me, I said it out of order. And it's uh, it's pretty tasty. It's my one of my current favorites. And she's drinking it out of a koozie. This is straight out of Azkaban. I am. Yeah, I am. that's pretty nice. I actually have a backup one, and I have an extra koozie, a different koozie on it with our car show on it. So smart. I'm gonna just in case a, you're, in case Babe can't bring you drinks. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do a quick plug. If you are a car or hot rod enthusiast, um, the Invasion Car Show is on October 23rd. Registration opens online, invasioncarshow.com on Friday morning. Wait, what day is it? The sh the car show is on October 23rd. Okay, I was like shit. I was like I can't do that and go see Twin Temple in LA. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to LA to go see my favorite satanic duo up band. Who loves a satanic duo up band? That's me. They're so good. They're so pretty. You you are their target audience. Pretty much, yeah. No, I'm I'm in, <laughs> I'm, I'm in their coven. They're like, hey, did you used to be a rockabilly chick who likes evil? 
we're here for you. We've got some really good costumes. Uh, Louisiana uh, Purchase, who's a really awesome drag queen from Austin, is going to be there. Uh, she's on their Baphomet split single, getting uh, getting ritualized and brought into the fold. So I'm hoping they're going to redo her ritual because I would love to see that live. It'd be so good. I really hope I get covered in blood too. So now I just start, I think we already talked about it. I'll be talking about my Halloween outfit for a long time so as it as it after we watched the uh that show though i think i may change it because i was really going for like super sexy bat like but not like a sexy nurse but but, like you know liz's version of sexy which would just involve a lot of corsets and shit but there was like that kind of old there was like an old crone in one of them and she just had this badass like hot out you know she's she was old crone but she was amazing so i don't know i may go for (laughs) i may go for sexy old crone We'll right. see. I, I had to rewatch that episode. She was in it for like two seconds. So I'm going to watch it. Like, I don't even remember what episode it was in. So now I just have to rewatch the whole thing, which is not a problem. Uh, yeah. Totally so, it. what are you totally drinking tonight? Because it's a special day, uh, I opened a bottle of Calais Gravitas. Mm-hmm. So, uh, again, another, I know last week we had the fancy Calais wine. This is another fancy Calais bottle. But mm-hmm. hey, I, I didn't have any, I was going to b- open Champs, but I don't have any. If I do have it, I don't know where it is. <laughs> so I was like, so I was like, eh, you know, I was kind of going through the bottles and I saw this one. I was like, I haven't had this in a long time. And it's a good, it's a, it's a good reason. I hope I probably won't drink it all tonight so I can drink the rest tomorrow on my birthday maybe after I have like nine hours of meetings Ooh. Mm -hmm. all right so let's get to the shit so this episode fuck it up the ass with so many things so I was trying all weekend to get Liz to talk she's like I hate this episode she kept telling me how much she hated and I'm like why what is it like is it something scary is it something that I'm not gonna like what is it and she wouldn't tell me and now I know, cause like literally I was like three minutes in and I was like fucking creepy dolls. And so I texted you in all caps actually at that moment. Um, yeah. yeah, it's- uh, Yeah, it's oh, creepy oh, dolls oh. and creepy ghost children. So we get them both. Uh, we get yeah. both of them. So fuck all, all of your you. your favorite things, yeah. Although it was an amazing episode, but also fuck you. Yeah. Uh, so this episode first aired January 18th, 2007. And as I just said, the title is Play Things, which is- not Creepy. a good title like it's just gross it's just yeah. i don't know it just grosses me out and not because of the creepy dolls it's just you know they think yeah. Yeah. it reminds okay. me of that time i went to a bdsm party and they had like a playroom for people Ooh. who wanted to age play and i'm like no nope, can't do this run nope 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 nope, nope. Yeah. um Anyways, uh, not to judge your kink, but yeah, I'm judging that one. It's weird. Um, so this was directed by Charles Beeson. So he's actually pretty interesting. He started his directing career on the BBC so- uh, soap EastEnders, which I don't know if you know about that. It's pretty iconic. Uh, look, they said iconic, but yeah, it was a pretty famous thing that came out of, of Britain. Um, and then he also did some of their medical dramas and police series like Inspector Morse. Um and the BBC spy series Spooks. His U.S. credits so included Smallville, The Vampire Diaries, which will come up again in a second, mm-hmm. uh, Person of Interest and Timeless. He directed 14 episodes of Supernatural, and uh, he also oversaw a number of episodes of the David Tennant series Around the World in 80 Days, which I didn't know David Tennant did that, and I'm what? kind of excited about either. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he died of a heart attack in April of this year at age 64, mm-hmm. and, and the cast members of Supernatural had some really amazing good things to say about him, to see about how much of a, a gent he was. He was a very British gent. Yes. Um, so um, we're, we're going to see a lot more of his work coming up. Um, the writer was Matt Whitten, who also wrote No Exit, and so I'm not going to dive into him a little bit more. But yep, yeah, so that is the background of this. We'll have some other background things of going, but let's just dive into the madness of this this episode. Oh, yeah. So episode opens with um, the, the the inn, the sign for the inn established in 1930. Um, and you see a white delivery van pull up and you see, and then they cut to creepy kids on the stairs is what I wrote down. So my God, this is already gonna be creepy. It says two little girls, one with straight hair, one with curly hair. Other than that, they look pretty much the same. And then um, basically they're talking about their toys in the house that they're this guy is coming to take the toys that they don't play with 
And so they showed some of the toys and I immediately wrote, oh God, it's fucking creepy dolls. Anyways, so mom's like, they're only gonna take the toys you don't play with because we're moving. And then one of the little girls says, son of a bitch. The other girl says, son of a bitch. And mom gets mad. It was kind of funny. And then um, yeah. it was funny. Yeah. Little kids cursing is funny. I'm sorry. It, it, and it, and then, it is funny. But I mean, we're going to stop here because who's the mom? Who the fuck is this mom? This happens to be an actress whose name is uh, Annie Wershing, who also was known as Lily Salvatore on Vampire Diaries. Yeah, Vampire Diaries can nope. I still haven't bought their liquor. I was going to buy that last week. I can't get it delivered to my house. I just haven't made a liquor delivery in a while. But yeah, the then, Saboteur brothers have made a new bourbon, by the way, guys. And yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll highlight it in the show soon. Yes. And then um, and as a side note, she also did appear in one episode of Angel. I need to double check which episode, but she did have a role in one episode of Angel. Yeah, I'll have to look in that. Yeah. So my notes on this is we're laughing, you know, your, your thing's going. It's like, so up on the stairs, they're creepy fucking girls, but they swear. So I like them. Then Tyler goes into her room with dot, dot, dot. Nope, I'm out. That was like, and I was just like, I can just stop this episode <sighs> right here. I was like, nah, I'm fucking done. I'm like, this room. Fuck this room. Who yeah. makes this room? Creepy, creepy people make this room. No, no. This should never exist. Set it on fire, burn the whole fucking place down. I don't care. Fuck all these dolls. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, fine, I'll stay. But so, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so the little girl goes in the room playing with this dollhouse, which is basically, which is a like a, a, a miniature replica of the actual inn that they're in. And then she she sets one of the little dolls in this little chair. And then she turns around, and it turns back, and the little doll's not fucking there anymore. It was at the bottom of the stairs with its head twisted around completely. And then she yeah. hears her mom screams. Her mom's Susan. And he did. And he did. His neck is twisted around. And there's a lot of blood. And this is sad. I will point out also this gentleman who played um, Larry is uh, Jonathan Bruce, is the actor, and he plays the biker in Elf. And it is July, so we can talk about Christmas. Because I, hey, well, I love the movie Elf. It's like Christmas in July. It's cool. Do you know something, Diana? What? I've never watched Elf. <gasps> the movie brings me so much joy. I cry I know, every I know time. That. I will watch it at minimum once every holiday season, and I will cry every time I watch it. Every time. I always mean to watch it and I just just don't. I don't know why. I just I just never watch it. Like I kind of mean to. Someday on a plane I'll watch it, I'm sure. Uh, oh. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna segue right. yeah. to the boys are the boys are gonna be in a motel in Peoria, Illinois. Did they you gotta find know, Ava. They gotta find Ava. But did you know that Peoria, Illinois has like one of the highest murders per capita in the in the country? Hmm. I learned this watching the show Relentless that's on uh, Discovery Plus, and they just ended it, and uh, the ending was unsatisfying to say the least. So I mean, <laughs> watch it because it's good. But it was like, Ugh. but yeah, yeah. yeah you, were you just telling me to watch this? I was just telling you to watch it, but they finished it last night, and it was it was. I mean, it's really good it's really really good but then i'm just like from a i don't like unsolved mysteries and i'll just leave it at that um but anyway so yeah peora is full of like like a whole bunch of drug people and uh human trafficking and because apparently human trafficking is really big in the middle of the country right now and yeah so don't go to peoria that's how i feel in peoria yeah but usually be, be, there. be safe if you live in peoria i don't know yeah uh, yeah use a buddy always have a buddy, buddy system, system if you're there mm -hmm. uh but sam has fought, finally started listening to blue so at least you know i guess you know he learned something yeah yeah so yeah he um yeah ellen he calls ellen trying to figure, see if she has any leads on finding ava and she reports basically that hey we've got a job from ellen there's two freak accents at this inn let's go check it out and Dean's kind of like, whoa, who, who the fuck are you? You're actually interested in doing the job instead of moping around. And I'm in, I'm impressed, but okay. Um, but, and they kind of dropped that at this point, they've been looking for Ava for a month that haven't found any trace of her really. So he, Sam basically is trying to find her because he feels guilty. He feels like it's his fault that she turned Cray and killed her fiance and disappeared. And so now his- No, but thing, she killed her fiance. Huh? We don't what? know that she killed her fiance. There's That's just true. a bunch of blood. Demon. Yeah, you're right. Her her fiance, he feels guilty because 
she's gone and the and her fiance is deceased how about that yes and lots of you know it, it wasn't in peoria it would make sense but um but, yeah so but he so, wants to not give he wants to not give up on finding her but he also wants to save people in the meantime as and we're kind of getting the this is kind of his penance and his way of accepting what's going on with him and everything else is that well if i just keep saving people at least maybe that'll keep me from feeling weird about other things Right. Yeah, I mean, I guess I think it also. I mean, and we'll find out later in this episode. No spoilers because it's happening mm-hmm. in five minutes. Mm-hmm. But it also does seem like a very fake cherry attitude. Like even to me, I'm like, mm. and Dean's like, mm. and so he's, but he's well, like, Dean says that attitude is way too healthy for me. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. But yeah, but so it's we're, like, we're, just keep moving. Like I don't know. I kind of get that. Like if I'm stressed or upset about things or whatever, I'm a just like. I'm, I'm like, I just keep trucking, just keep trucking. I don't care. I'm, I'm bogged down, but I just keep doing something just to keep me occupied. Yeah, no, I got to keep busy. I mean, I, I agree with that. Like I will, if I'm having bad times, I will delve myself into worker crafts. Yeah. So. All right. So they get to obviously to the inn and Dean makes a joke about, you don't get a lot of old school haunted houses. Um, Yep, and Sam notices a yeah. quincux, quincunx, which is a t- unfortunate word to say. Uh, Q-U-I-N-C-U-N-X is how it's spelled. Oh. Um, and so, and and Dean's like, hey, Dean pops some knowledge, and he is like, that's known for hoodoo work, isn't it? And yeah. Sam, I, I don't know why they're just obsessed with hoodoo in this part of the season, but whatever. Um, yeah. So Sam's like, yeah, right, you fill this thing with blood weed, and you've got a powerful charm to ward off your enemies. So a quincux is a geometric pattern that consists of five points arranged and across before them forming a square or a rectangle and a fifth at its, at its center. And that forms the arrangements of the five unit patterns that you see on six sided dice, uh, playing cards and dominoes. So those all have a quincux, cunks, and I say quincunks real fast. Like it's, it's just gonna happen. <laughs> you just gotta get uh, out, yeah. Yeah. So blood weed. Um, so I looked that up and that's known as blood lily. And I didn't have, to, I, sorry, it's been a long, long week and I didn't have time to go d- diving through my books. So I just did a quick uh, Google search or Dr. Go search search. And so blood weed is also known as blood lily. I did find that blood root was a woodland plant used by old time conjurers and root workers as a guardian for the family. Um, it's believed by many people that when blood ties bind people together in permanent relationships, but respect and consideration are lacking. Uh, they can also be used to ward off evil in the home and bring better luck in family matters. So very, I mean, if blood root, I'm assuming is, um, I know, I'm not assuming, but uh, it's, it, it's got a blood and a root. So I'm guessing probably yeah. maybe that's what they meant. Um, but the fact that the word off evil and then also family relationships, I think, is where this really kind of delves in. Because mm-hmm. as we learn, we'll learn later More. in the episode, mm-hmm. um, it, it does, it, it makes sense, right? Um, and then Jean also ma- Dean also makes the unfortunate joke that it, this place is too white for hoodoo. Yeah. Yeah, mm. there's there's some there's some unfortunate oh. humor in this episode. Oh, oh yeah, because then then just moments later they go to check in, and Susan um assumes that they are antiquing quote unquote which is obviously her code for and it makes a reference to them getting a king bed so she's obviously implying that she is certain that they are gay yeah because only gay men antique well probably but um <laughs> also she she gives him his credit card back and she's like thank you mr mahog mahogoff and there is a word play in that which I'm not sure, like, and this is from the Supernatural Wiki. I did not figure this out on my own, which, you know, I wish I could take credit for this. Um, but that's a wordplay related to masturbation, because if you sound that off real slow, usually it's preceded by Jack. So. Oh, my gosh. I'm just going to oh. let you guys figure that one out on your own. Um, oh, my gosh. So we, we, we have that joke slid in here. Um Yep, and then we're gonna go to another unfortunate gay joke from the the elderly bellboy Sher- is he, Sherwin. Who is, is he there. a bellboy? Is that what you caretaker? Like, he's, like, like, he's like a he's like a little bit of all of it, and that's why it was kind of weird. Um, 
it's um his name is sherwin he's like a bellboy slash a like a concierge kind of he's played by john r taylor who has also had roles in fringe sucker punch final destination 2 and x files oh sucker punch that's unfortunate yeah could have been so good it could have been i was so disappointed by that movie same same so anyway, so they get to their room and uh like Dean's just freaking out about how creepy the place is. And it is. But why is there some random ass old wedding <laughs> dress like thumbtack to the wall? I literally have why is there a creepy wedding dress on the wall? Like for decoration, I I don't I don't get it. But there is a badass lamp in that room. I'll find a picture of it. Yeah, I mean, the room is still awesome in a very old bed and breakfast type of way, which seems weird for this hotel. But again, wedding dress on the the wall. That's it's not even in like a shadow box. It's like somebody thumbtacked or like staple gun to that shit to the fucking wall. It's very like, bah, bah, bah. I don't know, like they were like coming in like we're staging this to sell because remember they were selling this right. Yeah. So like the the HGTV you know sellers came in and they're like okay to stage this we need something in here. What do you have? Oh, you have this wedding dress. And it was like Paige from Trading Spaces was in there and she She's was like, like shit to walls. she was like yes this is the aesthetic we're gonna go for. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So, yeah. So they start figuring things out a little bit and basically the, the, the what they're piecing together because Susan did tell them the hotel is shutting down is basically that the victims um, so far, there's been two at the uh, at the hotel, were both tied to the shutting down of the hotel. So that's what they're figuring out now. So they're kind of like, okay, well, there's something here that's trying to protect it. But of course, Dean's very focused on the fact that he's concerned that people thought they were gay yeah of course because that's steve um because he's butch and you know that, that's what happens if you're butch people think you're gay uh, whatever um, yeah it was a very nonsensical conversation but yeah so sam finds an urn in the hallway that has that symbol on it again you can say the word again because i'm not going to try and cunt <laughs> that one it, it, that's just what the word is now it's quen cunt okay um so they well, go try to... like, it could be quim cunt and that's two cunts in a row and oh. diana is vomiting in her mouth right now she's like let's stop talking stop saying these things stop using the word oh. quim you have a moist quim diana i'm just gonna say that right there and she's like i hate you and diana's like oh. nope i'm out and this is where the whole podcast series ends <laughs> <laughs> Recording has ended. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, the, the creepy Zoom. That's all you hear is a creepy Zoom lady. The recording has ended. <laughs> oh, all right. So they go to Susan's door and they're really awkward. Like they didn't have a plan at all. And usually they have some kind of a fucking plan. It was very awkward. Uh, I'd be like, what the fuck do you guys want? Like, go away. But they said they wanted to see the dolls. And Dean's very proud of himself, making it sound like Sam's really into dolls. And uh, I do like that they, when they go in the room and she lets them in to see the dolls, it seems like, yeah, super not creepy at all. Yeah, and we finally actually, like, I think in this scene, you get to see how massive that dollhouse is. It's it fucking is. huge. It's like, that thing is like, that thing's like almost five feet tall, probably. Yeah, it's it's massive. It's amazing. Like, the mm -hmm. whoever built that for the show, kudos to you. That shit was fucking impressive. And that's like a thing. That's a specialty. I mean, I don't, no, no offense. I don't understand that craft as much as I respect the craftsmanship. I just don't really understand it. So but... would, you, would, would you understand it more if I had murder scenes staged inside the dollhouse? No, no, no. <laughs> You're like, no, no. That doesn't help. Uh, that makes it actually, creepier. Yeah, actually, our friend who went to Dallas with us this weekend, he sent me an article about uh, there used to be this tradition. It wasn't widespread, but there's enough of them. And I'll, I'll throw a link in the, in the show notes to this. But there was a tradition when um, children died, like especially little girls at the, the gravesite, they would build dollhouses for them. Mm. And they're kind of cool, but also That's creepy fucking creepy because okay. they're haunted with dead ghost children and nobody likes a dead ghost trap no so, so yeah and so uh the, the guys find a doll with a twisted neck with so they are like hey you know did you break your doll and um tyler the little girl insists that she found the doll like that and that um rose w grandma rose w wouldn't let her break the toys basically so and that's when they figure out that 
of course there's a creepy grandma upstairs. Well, and they show this disturbing old woman and Diana can probably see my face because I was having my notes in Google Docs and it made a very weird autocorrect. So it says, and then they show a disturbing old woman in a wheelchair, but Sam can't talk to her because she's dick. So I'm not sure what Google is like as assuming I'm just gonna type, but apparently Google thinks I'm gonna type she's dick. So huh. that makes no sense, Google. Um, yeah, I think I don't know. Did we get the shot of the old lady yet? I just got so yeah, they they they, they okay. show like a cutaway like, to her just like sitting in a wheelchair. Yeah, like, of course. Behind. It's like the it's like the most sorry, sorry, directors on this one. It was like the most cliche, like eye roll inducing like the old woman in the attic in her wheelchair looking out the window like okay like yeah that was super creative guys sorry i was yep. annoyed by it uh i just feel like there's so much more that, like yeah i gotta you gotta shoot get a shot at another creepy old lady that's and no offense we'll get, we'll get more about her later at this point that's all you think but like it's just a wasted shot in my opinion but that's okay all right so yeah so Sam says that dolls are used in all kinds of voodoo and hoodoo, like curses and binding spells. So mm -hmm. let's talk about fucking dolls. Oh, and man. We're going to talk about dolls. And we're gonna, uh, we may need to change this segment because it's lore. But really, I think we need a new name for this. This is Let's Go Shopping for Haunted Shit. Oh, God. Because I'm taking you guys shopping for haunted dolls. Thank you for tuning in to Liz's Haunted Shopping Network. Liz's Haunted Shopping Network. Liz's Haunted Shopping Network. Oh my God, it's the HSN. We have the new HSN. Don't sue us. Um, maybe lowercase h. Can't, is that not copyrighted? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, look, there's a lot of things about haunted dolls. Um, obviously we've got like the big ones, you know, we've got Annabelle, we've got Peggy, who I will be seeing in a, in a couple of weeks when I go to Las Vegas and go to Zach Baggins Museum. Um, and I'll be seeing her at night with a flashlight because I am that person. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, there, there's tons of famous stories about haunted dolls, but you know, it's like, if, if you, if you go and you just go to Google or DuckDuckGo because Google is evil um, and just put in haunted dolls for sale. Holy shit. There are so many haunted dolls for sale. And is that Diana, irresponsible? Is that irresponsible to knowingly sell a haunted doll? I don't know, but I want to make this a new glitter bomb. Is, so, this, is this an unethical issue of like, if you're sell, if there's a spirit haunting a doll and you sell it, are you selling fucking spirits? Is that okay ethically? Did you get their consent to put them I, on a that's doll what I'm and saying. sell them? Did you get their I family's consent? Like, what the fuck? Sorry. I don't. That, that's a very interesting question. Yeah, I don't. I think we got some ethics here. Um, also, just you know, if you want your own haunted companion, though, there's a number of places you can go. But really, you're just gonna go to Etsy. You could go to eBay, and we'll go into a, another place here. But so, I want to talk about some of my favorites that I found um and oh my god there's so many and they're so amazing um so some of my favorites were starting off with some of the Etsy ones all right so we could go to the shop Black Emporium B-L-A-C-C-E-M-P-O-R-I or Emporium B-L-A-C-C Emporium um, who does metaphysics potions root work and services for hire out of New Orleans and from them for $350 you can buy haunted estate Emma. Now the thing that I learned as I was researching this is people love writing these doll stories and they spend a lot of time. So we're going to go into some of the, the stories behind these dolls. So Emma. Emma is from a haunt for haunted estates. She was purchased on a recent trip. I have had her and she is quite the beauty, possessive and extremely needy. Please do not purchase her if you will ignore her. Emma is the name on the doll and only 5,000 made, but her spirit name is Emily. Her birth year is 1901 to 1910 in New Hampshire. She loves television, a bowl of nectar and bright objects. Silver cones dated 1900s and she loves stories of 
any kind. I guess she loves silver coins. All right. Any questions, please message me. So that's Emma. If you want to buy Emma, she's available for $350 on Etsy. Uh, from the shop Witchium. Witchium sells haunted dolls, items, and witchy trinkets from Florida. So we can meet Diana. She's uh -huh. available for $70. Diana is a young 20-year-old girl that is sweet and outgoing. She always enjoyed going on adventures that involve traveling. Diana traveled by train to many different cities and states. She loves the nature scenery of the train rides. Diana passed in her early 20s due to common influenza. She lived a Ew. youthful life, which she enjoyed dearly. She was drawn to this vessel because of the puppy in the back. She always wanted a puppy, but she never got the chance to get one. Some of Diana's favorite things are postcards, puppies, and bells. She is looking for a companion that will take her on adventures, car rides, and vacations. She wants to help her companion with tuning into their adventurous side, confidence, and independence. She makes the room feel energetic and sophisticated. Diana gets along very well with pets, children, and other spirits in the house. If you are drawn to Diana, then she is certain that you'll be the perfect adventure partner. Sadly, Diana has sold. Sorry, guys. But if you want to go to the same site, you can buy Elizabeth. You can buy Elizabeth for $55. Elizabeth is a positive spirit, comfort with high vibration and love. She is a sweet five-year-old girl who passed by unknown cause. She mentioned that one day was different than any of the other days. Her mother found her in her bed, lifeless, with her lips blue and skin so pale. Elizabeth mentions that that was the way she realized she was no longer alive because she was able to see her own body while her mother could not hear her. Elizabeth always has been a good girl during her living days. She always was willing to help her mother with all she needed. She really misbehaved. Elizabeth loved to chase butterflies and loved berry picking. She loves playing with dolls. She loves dandelions and butterflies. Elizabeth wishes to be with a companion that she can help comfort during bad times. She wants to offer high vibration and help with finding your inner child. She wants to be loved and in a stable home. She is pretty good with not bothering anyone in any way. She does signal that she's around when you see butterflies or dandelions. She communicates well with dousing rods, pendulum, and flashlight. She gets along well with other pets, other children, and other spirits in the home. If you feel a connection with Elizabeth, she'll be so delightful to be your companion. Remember, she's only $55 available on Etsy. From the shop, November's Bath and Body. Who sells haunted dolls out of Silver Spring, Maryland, but the shop's name is November's Bath and Body? There were no body products in her shop, not to give you any shade, girl, but come on, like change your name to Elizabeth you to November's Donna Dolls? I, yeah. I don't know. So um, we can get a bargain doll from her. So you can get Valentina for only $24.99. Wow. Valentina is always trying to get my attention. That's because she misses her mom so much it hurts her and makes her very sad. But most of the time she's happy. She told me her dad hurt her mom really bad. She thinks her mom died first and then he shot her in the chest. That's the reason she wants her mom to see if she's okay or not before she crosses over. She is 12 years old. Holy fuck. <laughs> Valentina these, people, these people are insane. Yep. Valentina likes spending time with my other spirit children. She also loves reading and she loves reading to them. She said she does this to make the other spirit children happy. She also likes going for rides with me to the store. So that was Valentina. Um, all right. So the last one that we're going to talk about from Etsy before we go into a new one is uh, Cindy. And the reason we're talking about Cindy is because this doll fucking blinked at me from my computer. And I was not happy with Cindy. I'm like, what the fuck? Why are you blinking at me? So fuck Cindy. Um, she is the shop from my spirit dolls. And she has a, a lot. There's a lot of information about Cindy. So I'm going to try and cut it out. Um, so Cindy does like to show herself in dreams. She's in her 20s. She's a gorgeous girl who died at her engagement party. She was originally sold for $186.11, but now she's on sale for $167.50. So she's a bargain. 
And so, like I like she said, she's absolutely gorgeous, and she was also beautiful in person when she was alive. When I first got to know Cindy, I told her how pretty she was and that I loved her dress. She said thank you and introduced herself as Cindy. When I repeated Cindy to confirm her name, she said, that's me. I could hear her laughing on the spirit box as well as singing. She has a beautiful voice. Then she said, beautiful view as the ocean can be seen from my condo. I asked how old she was and she said, 20 years old. She sighed, said, happy. She told me it was her special day. I asked if it was her wedding day. No, she said. I asked how she passed away and she says it was a fall. I asked if her death was suspicious and she said, I guess so. She then said, wild posture. I like it. Referring to my slouching. I said I shouldn't slouch and she said we're adults. She also said everyone's plagued with guilt. I assume she's talking about everyone at her party she told me she lived until the 1970s and then she went to the life. I asked if there's anything I should know about her. She told me that she's very smart. I asked if she came from a wealthy family and she said yes. I asked if she likes my puppy. She said yes. I have no doubt about it. She told me she likes things the way she wants them. I asked if she died at her engagement party and she said yes. The dress she has now on her vessel is similar to the dress that she wore during her engagement party, but her dress is much better. I asked her what her favorite things are. She said, a free reservation, fashion, and steak. Hmm. It, yeah, it would be good for Cindy to be with someone who is willing to spend a lot of time talking to her and spending time with her. She would really like to do regular 20-year-old girl stuff since she was forced to grow up fast. Um, you can find her, her activities include, she enters dreams, cold spots, orbs, EMF, footsteps, presence can be felt while watching movies, playing games, joking around, etc. She can talk through a spirit box, pendulum use, and also the Necrophonic app. So there's an app for that. Uh, so what? on uh, available on iTunes Play Store and in the and Android Play Store. Wait, iTunes, wait, iTunes is in the Play Store. Whichever one. So iTunes, you can get it off of iTunes. You can get it off of Android. You can get the Necrophonic app, which can help you talk to dead people. So if you want that, you know, go get it. Um, I'm glad somebody made that. Wait, good use of your coding skills. All right. So those are the highlights from Etsy. But then, then I found the joy of hauntedDollies.com. This may have been the web best website that was designed to the year 2000. Like it has this epic star background, which is like takes me back to my GeoCity days. Like just so beautiful. Like it could have been hosted on Earthlink. Uh, but on this site, you can buy dolls with entities in them or just the doll, or you can buy the entities by themselves. And there's just a variety of things that you can buy. Like in his face, it's just like, what? what? You can buy the entities by themselves? Like what are they just like? sell you the licensing or is it just like a jar of a jar like i don't understand i don't never mind uh, we, we can get some we'll get into some of the entities you can buy them they're fantastic um so for you know the bargain if, you, if you're a bargain shopper right one of the lesser price things of uh, of the haunted dolls is of the the haunted antique baby doll ruth so a baby ruth you can buy a baby ruth for only 69.99 uh she is hot she is highly active uh this is haunted doll ruth she is adorable she is an adorable baby gal she died of crib death <laughs> She is only three weeks old. She needs attention and a loving new family. You may hear baby crying and baby sounds. She loves playing with rattles and mobiles. So make sure to leave some out for her. She is a highly active sweetie and she's hoping to find a new loving family who could care for her. She is a bright light entity and will bring joy, happiness and laughter into your home. Like while this doll is fucking crying? No. Uh, she gives off a smoky mist, as you can see in the photo, moves objects, gives off high EMF readings, EVPs, orb activities, and works well with the pendulum and Ouija board. Make her a part of your family. You won't regret this one. Yeah, I think you will. Yeah, I think, why, why would you purposely put a crying baby in your house? 
Right? Like, this seems like the opposite of, of soothing light. I'm like, oh, I want to bring a crying child. Like, no, thank you. I don't even want to pop it out of my vagina, much less like pay for wearing a creepy fucking doll. Um, okay. Then, uh, so one of my other favorites was for the low price is $149.99. You can get the haunted doll, Mary Jane Kelly, who is a Jack the Ripper victim. Uh, she is highly active. This is, of course, our highly active. This is Haunted Doll Mary. She is a 25-year-old singer. She was murdered by Jack the Ripper on November 9th, 1888. She is a very fun and loving entity. She is a powerful protector. She is great for women who are being abused. She loves children and pets. She will be a great addition to protect you and your family and is hoping to find a loving family who could care for her. You can check out the records of her death at whitechapeljack.com, the Whitechapel murder slash Mary Jane Kelly. I, I, I'm still like, just like, blown away there's enough of a market for this uh, and no offense if this is your thing but i just don't like aren't you people usually trying to get rid of haunted things and nope. then like yep <sighs> yep nope, nope. intentionally buying them and then once again it is like i don't know never mind i'm gonna let it go go for it. go ahead mm -hmm. just, my my mind's just kind of blown over here so another of my favorites, which originally was the regular price was $248.99, mm. but is now on sale for the low, low price of $199.99. You can get an adorable baby boy surprise entity adoption. Oh, it's a surprise. You don't know what you're getting. Why? Because there are so many lost souls around us seeking our love and attention. Many of the, those souls are babies, some of whom died young and some of who were miscarried or, and this is my favorite typo on the side, aborted. They were aborted. You don't, you got to get that aborted soul. Um, these souls long for love and attention. They need a family to have that chance of normalcy. They deserve it, especially since they lost so much. They will never graduate, go to the prom, have their first kiss or marry. Their lives have been cut short and they're losing out, uh, losing out on so much, but you can change that. If I die in a fucking spirit, please don't put me in a goddamn doll and sell me on the internet. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know how else to say this. Do I need to put this in my fucking will or something? I think you do. I think you do. My like, soul please do, not, please do not capture and sell my spirit a creepy fucking doll. Yeah. So if you want to have the surprise baby boy entity, the first step is to decide on a doll vessel in which will house your baby spirit. Then we will attach a lost soul that's in need of a family to the doll vessel of your choice. Uh, you can even choose the age group. Uh, do you want a newborn, a one-year-old, etc.? You can choose and we will find a spirit that is best suited for you and attach it to the vessel. You will receive complete instructions and all information on your new baby entity. This will include the name, age, and any information we may, may know about your darling angel. Please take good care of these dolls as they are spirited and should be treated as a real baby. Except you do not need to feed them or change their diaper. So love them and give them the attention they need. So, but maybe you're like, I don't want a haunted baby. Maybe I want a haunted monkey doll. I mean, that was also something that I clearly wanted. Yeah, I want a creepy fucking doll that looks like a monkey. So it's like a monkey, like with a, that terrible face. It's like half human, half monkey. And in like a doll and like human out clothes. Blah. So you can get the haunted monkey named Stacy for the low price of $299.99. This doll will have the spirit of a five-year-old named Stacy attached to it. She is fun and energetic. She is a bright light entity and will bring love, light, and prosperity into your home. She is a joy to own and all who encounter will feel a sense of happiness and warmth. Diana's losing her shit. I am. I'm losing my shit. So first <laughs> off, now, now instead of just saying, don't put my spirit into a fucking doll when I die, I have to be like specific. Don't put me in a fucking monkey doll either, right? And Definitely. Wait, now you own, you own the spirit? Who the fuck are you? How do you own a spirit? Yeah. How dare you try to think you can own a spirit? This is not okay. Like, yeah. Like, right? Is this, is this is, like, it's like owning a person. You can't do that shit. You can't do that. We decided long ago owning people was wrong. Yeah. yeah so, so Stacey... Oh. 
<laughs> and you didn't yeah. like legally adopt it. So it's not like a minor child and you're a custodian or some bullshit. Okay, okay. Don't tell yourself that. I'm going to call CPS on your child monkey. Um, <laughs> so Cece's uh, hug monkey. I can't, I can't process this. Oh my God. Yeah. So she comes in a pink polka dot outfit to add to her sweetness. Welcome her into your home and open arms. Order now. She is a fine adult collectible, not intended for children under 14. Oh. But wait, maybe, maybe you didn't want a haunted monkey. Maybe you wanted something a little more, more classic. Did you ever want your own Carpathian vampire entity? Why, yes, you could have that in a Barbie. And you could have her for the low, low price of $599.99. So they put what a fucking a vampire spirit in a fucking Barbie. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Barbie, but. It's actually a really pretty Barbie, and I kind of like the Barbie, but it's like, because it is a vampire Barbie. But then I've also, and we'll get to her description, but I also had just had this image of a vampire Barbie with like little tiny fangs that pop out. Like, and then like this little tiny vampire not, Bobby not is trying natural to like, vampires because their teeth are gross. Yeah, no, 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 not that, not that vamp, not that vampire teeth. Just like you know, classic, like two classic fangs two, that like yeah. two canines, canines that pop out, and then you have this little Barbie that's trying to suck your neck really hard, but she only has these two tiny teeth. So it's like a little mosquito that's just like, ah, what is that? You're like, oh, fucking Barbie! Like, oh, god damn you, Carpathian vampire, get off my neck. Uh, so this Barbie will have a Carpathian vampire attached to it. You will get your vampire's name and information along with the doll. You don't you don't get to know the name ahead of time. Just a random fucking Carpathian vampire. Because there's that it's, many. They've got extras. They have extras. We don't know which Carpathian vampire we're going to get attached to it, but you just know. We have a you surplus know. of Carpathian da- vampires. Yeah. Apparently. Well, according to them, they are a race originating from the earthen realm. They are a more sexual race compared to their counterparts. They're all very gorgeous and stunning with amazing powers the general likes include rose candles and incense but why should we keep them very help very helpful to fuel your sex drive and rekindle that lost spark they can help you perform any and all love driven or a sex driven spell because they're like ability they can also attract more friends in your life because you know what's going to help you get friends having a fucking vampire barbie doll like that's like that's what i look for in my friends i'm like cool like what's in your house like have you met my carpathian vampire barbie doll i've got this haunted doll collection that's that's yeah. how I get friends. You tell people you got a haunted yeah. doll collection. Yeah, everyone comes over. It brings all the vampire boys to the yard. Um, but oh. you know, hey, you know, maybe like vampire robbery isn't for you. Are you sucking at bingo? Uh, you know what you need for your bingo? You need a lucky troll. Um, yeah, so that was, you a, can, that was a thing. That was the thing. You can get one like lemonade parade for only nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. And these trolls are special. They will have a powerful luck spell that will be casted on each. These trolls will bring you good luck and fortune, as well as protect and guide you. This is a must have, as this is one troll you won't mind trolling around. Not my words, girls. Not my fucking words. You can also attach an entity to any of our trolls for additional fee refer to our entity list and you can add this troll along with your entity to your cart note you can also attach an animal who has passed over if interested acquire about this through chat or email so did your puppy just die put it in troll doll and then you'll have your puppy with you forever um okay so maybe that's not it maybe you have a child of your own and you hate them do you hate your child if you hate your child you may want to buy the it clown teddy bear collectible this is a teddy bear collectible that looks exactly like the it clown this is terrifying and bizarre like i'm so like so so you get a troll that's got both a luck spell and a random fucking spirit in it or a spirit from their list and then you can get like the most ter- like a, one of the most classically terrifying like clowns as a stuffed animal that looks like a teddy bear. Yeah. So it's basically it like a teddy bear. And you can get that for the low price of $39.99. These plush animals are special. It's they will have it's a seal. It's a seal. It's a seal. They will have a magical guardian spell on them that will be cast onto each. These stuffed animals will protect and guide your child. This is a must-have to keep your loved one safe and warm while they sleep. They will have happy thoughts and pleasant dreams. While, uh, hug, while cuddling their most I'm nightmarish like, oh, the- like doll ever. Yeah. Like, they're going to have nightmares and they're going to behave because they're terrified that this like spirit's going to fucking like kill them. That's why yeah. they'd be good. 
but also of course you can also attach an entity to any of these stuffed animals for an additional fee please refer to our entity of list course. and add this plush along with your entity to your cart so other entities i'm only going to highlight one there is a number of them if you put it already tell from the carpathian vampires and other so if you're a potter fan for only twenty dollars you can get a hippogriff entity what you can get a hippogriff oh. So a hippogriff is the result of the mating between a griffin and a horse, and they also originate from the earthen realm. They have the head, front claws, and wings of a griffin, and the body and rear legs of a horse. They are somewhat uncommon, but are also very wonderful and possess a wide array of gifts. And some of these gifts can include helping you to achieve goals you never thought possible, attract love, enhance romance, increase natural beauty, strengthen bonds with your friends, families, and lovers. You will become more seductive and the granting of wishes. General likes of the hippogriff include sugar, silk, and brown stones. Why should we keep them as my pages stick together? Uh, because they will help you achieve your goal, attract love, enhance romance. And, oh, wait, we already said this with the other one. So, yeah. Uh, so they're also very prideful, so you have to be very careful when you introduce You have to be really to careful with your hippogriff. Yeah, if, you're, if you come at them too fast, they're going to attack you. So we will finish our shopping excursion. So we're, we're done with happydolls.com, and we're going to go to eBay. So obviously you can buy everything on eBay, and I just wanted to finish with the most expensive doll for a sale on eBay. Mm. And this doll is of unknown origin, paranormal, mystical, metaphysical doll, paranormal haunt, that is the title of this doll, and it has a starting bid of $6,000. And then there is a mm. story that, of course, goes with a $6,000 doll. Um, my aunt passed away and left me the few things that scare me and I don't know what to do with. I'm hoping I can rehouse these items as someone who appreciates and know what to do with them. This doll was given to me by my aunt in Scotland on vacation by a woman she met at a bar. Super weird, I know. I know nothing about it originally came from, but I do know that she's always been into paranormal stuff and has always touted her connection with the paranormal. And I know that my aunt left the bar and went back to that woman's house in Scotland just to get it. Um, I think your aunt went back to that bar with that woman for, for, for something else, sweetie. Um, just went, met a woman at a bar and went home with her. She, yeah. she was, was totally, she, just, she was totally yeah. just getting a creepy doll. Totally. That's, all doll. That, that's what she, they, the chicks got drunk at a bar together and just went home to look at dolls. That's, that's our new word for it. All right. So I witnessed things happen with this doll that conflicts with my own beliefs of the afterlife. Whatever happened to her eyes actually occurred after I brought her to my house for my aunt's and a nightstand fell on me while I was standing in front of it. She was in a plastic box next to the dresser at that time. The two front legs of the dresser broke during the event and I had a nasty bruise on my left leg for a while. Shortly after that event, I noticed her eyes look like they were scratched off. My aunt told me she once put the doll in a cabinet that only had board games in it and in the middle of the day, the shelf above the one she was on caught fire. No one ever who <laughs> ever located the source of that fire. My aunt kept her out in the living room after that, not sure why, but my aunt insisted that the doll has to be kept out in open space after that happened. Four days after I brought the doll home, I came back from a friend's house and I got chills as I pulled into the driveway. I remember thinking about the doll and feeling like something was very wrong. I didn't believe in paranormal stuff at the time, but the thought of that doll being in my house made me feel sick. I kid you not, I drove away and slept in my car in a parking lot that night. I haven't had that bad of a feeling since. I want to be completely honest with whoever buys this item. I am scared of it, and it's not something I want to pass down in our family. However, I also know it holds priceless values to those interested in paranormal metaphysical experiences. If you're even the slightest bit afraid of paranormal events happening in your home, then don't purchase this doll. Before I got this doll, I thought the belief in Tana dolls were an attempt to personify objects so the human psyche can create some sort of artificial interpersonal bond. Now I am forced to acknowledge that an object could appear to have a consciousness, and sometimes there's just no explanation for it. I, must, I know this might sound like a crazy price, but I think this doll has value that I'm more value than I'm even aware of. If you want to know more, please feel free to reach out. I have plenty of other true stories regarding this doll, and I really enjoy talking about it because I like hearing different perspectives on what might be causing these events. I really don't know if it's a spirit, but I do strongly believe with my entire essence that this doll has some type of consciousness. And guys, 
there are no bids on this doll. So go get it. The price is six thousand dollars. You can get this her random aunt, fucking doll that set your house on fire because your did her aunt hate lesbian. her? Like, why would you? Did he? Did she? Did her aunt hate her? Like, yeah, nope. You get the creepy doll, bitch. Well, I think it, after Miss Wiggum also decided that haunted dolls are going to be the new glitter bomb. And instead of like sending glitter bombs to people, mm-hmm. I'm just going to randomly start shipping haunted dolls to people's houses. Or they may not even be haunted. They could just, I would just go buy Creepy some doll dolls. dolls. Just and just, yeah. Because if I was, if I opened up my mail and there was a fucking doll in it, I would set my house on fire. So, yeah, I, mean, I think it's Didn't like you the- have like a doll in your yard or doll shoe? Oh, you know, I have the demon doll. Yeah, there's a demon Barbie that pops up in my backyard and she kind of like flies around and I find her in various places. Uh, She fell out of a tree at one point. Yeah, I don't know. And there's also a random doll shoe that just shows up. Yeah, my haunted backyard, you know. Anyway, next next week my house cleaners had to clean all my trinkets like that's part of like their rotation so they had to clean all my trinkets by hand and i'm like oh these poor women are me crossing themselves like over and over again can you clean all my katrina doll collection which is massive so like all my skeleton dolls can can you just go dust each and every one of them for me thank you can you can you get all the, the demon things that i have all over my house yeah. I'm surprised these housekeepers keep coming back here. <laughs> it was like, they're having a- fascinating. They're going to tell somebody afterwards. It's like, yeah. I will say it's been a different group every time for the past, oh, like, two. So I, I think they keep passing me off being like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I just assume it's the same ones. That's hilarious. Nope, nope. It's a different group every time. And I think all of them are like- No, no. it's your turn. No. It's yeah. your turn. Go, you go to the demon house. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, so that was our haunted shopping network of the evening. Um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Um, if you know, you we also have a haunted shopping network credit card that we'll give you. You just give me all your personal information, and and yeah. I'll check your credit score and get it yeah. going. So yeah, totally. Oh uh, man! All right, so yeah. You can digest that right. for a second, Diana. Yeah, like, what like, the fuck? I'm still like, I, I'm serious about my ethical dilemmas with selling spirits. Like, I, I think it sounds kind of fucked up, man. It does sound kind of fucked up. And also, please note that I cut so many out of these. I just kind of had to pick the best. Like, there are hundreds, probably thousands of these yeah. things listed for sale. And if you want to buy this thing, cool. Well, and then like, so are the spirits inhabiting it willfully or are they like, they're tied so, to it sometimes they sometimes with things like that like they have to like tie a spirit to a, a an object so hauntedollies.com that's a lot of tying entities to dolls right so cool and i, I think some of the ones at etsy's that are just like we just found this doll and it was attached to it which i think is something we'll get implied out of this episode later yeah um but i mean if you look at like some of the other you know you look at you know Robert the doll or Annabelle or hair. I was I've been reading a book on Harold the doll, who's pretty exciting. Um, most of those are just like the doll, the spirits were just there. But yeah. these sound like very purposefully, like if there is a spirit role that you're attaching to these dolls, it sounds fucked up. Why why would you do that? Like yeah, it, it, sounds it mean. seems mean. Yeah. That's just yeah. mean. Let them go to the light or whatever. Do. Or let them yeah. just swarm around and like be poltergeists, you know? Like that seems a lot less binding than I mean, like you have to be stuck in this ugly fucking doll. Because all right. by, by the way, all these dolls are fucking hideous. Um, except for the Carpathian vampire Barbie, he was adorable. But for the most part, they're all like things I just not would not want in my home because they aesthetically gross me out. But yeah. all right. anyways. Well, yeah. So we cut to um Susan, Susan yeah. finds out that the hotel is going to be demolished. She's talking to some like business dude or whatever. And so, yeah. so then we cut to that guy a minute later, who's like in one of the rooms in the hotel, which is kind of weird. Like, like he just signs off the documents and like, and advises it her. It was also like the world's the oldest contract. Like it almost looked like it was on a scroll. I'm like, what okay, the fuck are you like? What, what accounting firm did you go to, to get the like, lawyer form to go to this printed out? Like, and we really don't know who this guy is. Like, we know he says that, but we're like, I don't know. Like, is he a fucking realtor? Anyways. So I think he, he's a lawyer. That's they, what end, I think. they end up saying he's a man from the company that bought the place. And that's all they really say. So he, they, we cut to him sitting on a bed and then they cut, then they cut to like the fucking dollhouse with the man sitting with the, a, a, a little doll sitting on the bed and uh tyler's playing like with tea time you know like little girls do and, and having ring around the rosy like all modern children do and whatever. 
Maybe she should be humming Jojo Siwa or some shit, apparently. <laughs> yeah, but anyways. Um, and so the, but behind the man in the real scene, you see the door behind him opening, um, but you don't really see anything there. And then um, you cut back to the little girl and she turns around and looks at the dollhouse and real creepy, you see the doll that was once sitting on the bed is now hanging from a noose from the ceiling fan. And yeah. So, so I'm not gonna lie, I may hung some of my Barbie dolls like that to say <laughs> You know, oh. I mainly to creep out my brother, but you know, I, I I may have I may have hung some of them from my upstairs loft, so they would just go like hanging down, like so while someone was sitting in the room, they would just see like this doll and a muse like coming downstairs. I had an interesting mm-hmm. childhood. Uh, uh, anyway, so, so he did. So he did. Um, the coroner, they see the coroner wheeling him out, and Susan's re- really upset and just calls it a lot of bad luck. Um, so Sam's trying to research grandma, who we find out his name is Rose, but Sam is fucking loaded. And so so, wasted. <laughs> um, he calls Dean bossy, which is kind of funny, but basically he, he's mad at himself and after he got, he got loaded because out of guilt, partially he's mad at himself for not having saved that man. He didn't save Ava and he's trying to save lives. He's trying to atone for a has anything he's done before but also trying to like pre-atone it he feels like if he does more saving that will keep him from turning bad is kind of like the balance yeah. the, the moral balance that he's going through yeah I, and dean calls out sam for drinking on the job but i'm like really dean like you're drunk yeah, like, all the time like yeah, what like, the oh, fuck? Yeah. Yeah. you have no fo- you have no footing here sir yeah yeah and also sam's just kind of a weepy whiny drunk i'm not saying i've never been that weepy whiny drunk and i apologize to all my friends for every time that has happened i am <gasps> sorry i have apologized and bought on my soul that i was like that because that is it's uncomfortable yeah. same same for me. Um, but basically, he's this turns though, and he, it's his moment to really tell Dean that, look, I, you really do need to watch out for me. Like Dad said, Dad wouldn't have said if it wasn't important. And with, with when and if the time comes, you have to kill me. You have to be the one to do it. No one else will be able to. And um, Dean kind of agrees, but also just kind of like go to bed, Sam. Kind of puts him to bed. Yeah, we've all had that junk friend. Yes, of course, I will do that. Go to go to bed, junkie. Yeah. And then he gets sad, and he wanders through the hotel and goes into the mold's most awesome hotel bar. And so creepy, but very cool. It's like the di- the abandoned dining room hotel bar. Well, it and- looks like The Shining. Like, yeah, it's very, very much like The Shining. That's exactly what I thought of, too. Yeah, and we've got a lot of Shining references in here, obviously. We've got the two girls, you know. the Yeah, the, the twins. Yeah. Well, the yeah. two little girls that look like twins. Yeah, and um, Sherwin's there and pours him a drink. And uh, Dean kind of alludes to there being a curse and wants to hear stories about the hotel. So he starts, so Sherwin obliges and starts talking and uh, shows, they're walking around. He shows uh, Dean a picture of Rose, so the grandmother, uh, and Susan when she was a little girl and explains how Rose has to go to a senior living facility, um, but won't, he won't say what's wrong with her. And then he shows another picture of Rose when she was a little girl um, with her nanny, um, whose name was Marie, uh, who's an African-American woman and was wearing the same hoodoo symbol that they saw on the planter in the urn. Yeah, she had a quin cunt on her. Dan is like, stop saying quin, quin cunt. <laughs> Please stop saying that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so she looked after her more than her own mother. Uh, so... So then we go into the next thing and we find, uh, sorry, Diana is looking for something underneath her desk. I don't know if we need to pause or no, we good. just need to keep going. Okay. All right. So we're going to, we're going to pivot then. Now we're going to go to the next day and Sam is looking like I looked on Sunday. Like he is like, granted, I didn't, I did not hug the porcelain toilet God, but I was close, very, very close to that. But yeah, he, He's not feeling good. Yeah. Well, and they Dean alludes to him having drank whiskey and Jaeger. <gasps> and then, and then Sam. Sam says, I can still taste the tequila. I'm like, oh God, whiskey, Jaeger, and tequila? I might just no. be thinking about that. Yeah, no, not a not a good thing. And yeah. then uh, and, and then Dean throws out a weird science line, which I do appreciate the reference to that when he was like, "The best cure for a hangover is a greasy pork sandwich served up in a dirty ashtray." And I'm like, "You're a dick," but I also appreciate that level of dick, dickishness. I'm not saying yeah. I've never done that to my friends, but yeah, 
Yeah. So um, now basically Dean's relaying what he found out about Rose and her nanny. So they're going to go um, try to talk to Rose. That's their plan because they think that the nanny may have uh, taught Rose how to do hoodoo. So they break into Susan's room, go past all the dolls and dollhouses, which is creepy as fuck. And then they go through like the weird, like back pathway steps to this weird little upstairs, like bedroom in the attic, basically. And this is where we get the shot, the cliche shot again of the old woman in a wheelchair facing the window away from the door, peering out the window. It's really fucking, I just find it so like eye rolly. Sorry. And they're talking to her, but she's not answering. And so like, I'm like, well, she can't answer apparently. And they uh, piece together that she is some woman that has had a stroke before. So she can't be actively practicing any kind of hoodoo that would be causing any problems in the house. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then, and then they, they asked if they want to poke her with a stick. And I'm like, yeah, poke her with a stick. Poke the lady with a stick. And I'm just like, yeah, so. So mean. Nice. So then Susan catches them and threatens to call the cops. They don't get the fuck out of there. Yeah, so she goes them out of the hotel. Yeah. So um, Tyler is talking. Uh, basically, at this point is when we start figure, finding out that Tyler is like twin. There's this other little girl, Maggie, that we've seen throughout the episode um, is actually her imaginary friend. She's imaginary and she does not like Susan. Oh, no. Very oh, no. upsetting. Maggie says, Maggie says they aren't allowed to leave uh, the house. And so Maggie tells Tyler that I don't like her. I'm like, oh shit, is he going to kill mom? Anyway, so we cut to Susan packing up the car. Um, Sherman has, uh, Sherman, the the worker at the house, has a really nice truck. Looks like a 1940s Ford. Like, they didn't do a yeah, really, it was, really good close up on it. But it was a, really but it was cool a good truck. truck. Yeah, I, I also noted. Awesome truck. <laughs> yeah. So we see Tyler playing with some wind up toy by the dollhouse. And then the swings because now there's a playground on the side of it, which I hadn't noticed previously, um, start to swing back and forth on their own. Mom's outside and the wind picks up. She's, and of course the swings outside start swinging fucking too. And she gets all suspicious. So she goes to check them out. Weird choice. Like I see that shit happen. I'm like, fuck you, I'm out. But she goes to investigate. Um, and then the seesaw starts moving and you see it happen in the dollhouse too. And Tyler's watching upstairs now, uh, what's happening with the little playground. And then the spinny thing, which I don't remember what it's called, but it's like a death trap and it was really fun on playgrounds. It's, it's like a carousel, but that's not really what you called it. No shit. What the fuck? Uh, We're going to have to, know. I don't know. It's, I don't know. The weird thing that goes around. I, I, the metal thing know. that you ran really fast and pushed around and made people throw up on, and then you'd jump on it and almost fall off and die. Yeah, and then you just impale yourself in the metal things. So yeah, playgrounds so are fun. awesome. Yeah. So much fun. That was like the best thing on the playground. Anyways, um, so she's checking all this shit out, moving on its own, like kind of like what the, Susan's like, what the fuck? And then her car starts and you know shit's about to get real then. So, because no one's in the car. I'm like, yep. it's going to ram her into the playground. Of course. Yep. So right in the nick of time, Sam tackles her out of the way. So lucky. So yeah lucky. they go back into the hotel and susan needs whiskey and i'm like yes girl you do you do <laughs> she, I, they walk I, in, I, she just goes whiskey <laughs> yeah, yeah. i appreciate you yep here for that yeah so she says she wants to know what's going on but we all know she doesn't actually want to know what's going on she just thinks she wants to know what's going on so they try to tell her and she calls them insane um but basically dean's come it says basically it's a hoodoo curse of some kind and they start to talk, finally get her to talk about Rose and find out that Rose had a stroke a month ago and they've pieced together now that Rose was actually warding off the spirit using hoodoo. So uh, Susan like doesn't believe any of this shit. He thinks it's cuckoo. Sam's like, no, we're in danger. We need to figure this out. And then he mentions her, da Susan's daughters, plural. And this is where they figure out that there's only one because she, and the other one must be her imaginary friend or a so ghost creepy magic or a ghost oh so creepy so um you see we cut to rose up in the attic and maggie the imaginary friend ghost child whatever the fuck she is at this point is like just talking to her and saying that tyler's gonna stay here with me and you can't stop it and she's gonna play with tyler tea parties forever and ever and ever and it's really creepy yep fuck ghost children you know yep. we all know we don't like them yep so we get back and then all the dolls are broken yay, yay. someone smashed <laughs> all the dolls we're very happy about this yep 
All right, so we do find out that Rose had a sister named Margaret and that she drowned in the pool. So mm-hmm. we're going to go to the pool and fuck yeah, I'm not going to go to this pool. And, this and pool they do is- a close up. And they do a close up first of this creepy fucking doll that looks like Maggie. There's a, Ma- one specific doll that's not completely smashed that looks like this Maggie girl watching them. Yeah, and so I don't know, I mean, granted, there was a time where it was traditional to make dolls that look like your yeah. little girls, um, but don't do that. It's fucking weird. Don't do that, it's gross. Like, well, you're right. We do cut to this badass fucking pool. Bad ass fucking pool. I want to stay at this hotel. I got to call yeah. it. I, I wrote down the notatorium because I feel like that type of pool in indoors should be called a notatorium. Did you just make that word up? No, it's a word. I like it. I notatorium. It doesn't sound like a notatorium. Like, <laughs> I like that a bit. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, the notatorium. Um, yeah, no, this place is fucking awesome, and I want yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have no words. It's just so like this is the HGTV like thing of of joy. It's got it's got a second level balcony. It's got it's a huge it's got tile work everywhere. It even has like fancy like tile like spelling out things. It's fucking sick all around. Anyways, but what's not cool about it at all is Tyler's hanging from the balcony, um, like about to jump, which is not good. Tyler's not excited about it. She says she can't swim. And Maggie is trying to talk her into staying forever because I can't leave. So creepy. Um, And listen to creepy ghost children. If they tell you to do things, just say no. No, ma'am. I I will not listen to you, creepy ghost child. And this part was really fucking freaky, honestly. Right as Sam and Dean and Susan get there and they're trying to break in through the most like sturdy glass I've ever seen in my fucking life. Like they are like really trying to break into this door. This glass will not break. I think that was supposed to be an allusion to um, the haunting itself, like that she was making it hard to get in. I don't know. But Sam's like, I can use this urn with urn with the with the quim cut on it. Yeah. But <laughs> even before that, all of a sudden, Maggie, that bitch, shoves Tyler, like pulls her arm off the railing and drops her into the pool. Now there's this cover on the pool, this clear cover on the pool. And that part like ekes me out. Cause I'm a very, very strong swimmer. Um, like very confident in water. She like, is. She's a crazy, like we were swimming in Belize and all the people, like none of us could swim. And Diana, who's like the smoker, I was like, ah, look at my lungs. <laughs> my lungs are so great. I didn't dive to the bottom of this ocean and grab this conch. And we're all like, ah, ah. and she's like, la, 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 I'm a little mermaid bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 but that, but dropping into like that pool cover, freaky because that's like wraps around you you don't have you yeah. can't get out of something like I don't that. Even and, know then, how and, then, yeah. and then she like gets then it goes in and you sink in it and then water gets in and so then you're like wrapped it's like being like wrapped in a garbage bag and dropped in the water i'm like yeah. that's fucking terrifying. this is a phobia this is yeah, definitely was, a phobia i was not into it at all i was very that was this was super upsetting like oh we like we talk shit on the dolls and like joking and like kind of joking dolls are fucking creepy yes but like not into it but different this was like oh shit that's fucking like scary scary um so i'm like sam cannot break the fucking glass door <laughs> that's what i wrote down but well, also on this point too like what's the point of putting plastic and i know i've seen this in other things like what's the point of putting plastic over a pool just drain it like i don't get well, it well a lot of uh, 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 so i wouldn't i don't understand it for an indoor pool especially um because it's not obvious it's obviously not a safety feature um People do different, like we don't, we, we have a pool. We never, we don't do it either. We don't drain it and we don't, we just maintain it year round. We find it easier that way. Everybody has their own mentality on it. The only reason you really put a cover on typically is either for um, keeping crap out of it or for um, if you want to like stay warm and stuff like that. Sometimes you use different type of covers for that, but there's not, I don't know. I don't know why you would have yeah, a clear plastic just, pool it, cover on an indoor pool. I just it, don't It just don't seems like that. an excuse to make somebody drown. Like yeah. this just seems like it's tor- terrible safety hazard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyways. So, but then we cut to little Miss Tyler kicks her head above water for a second, but guess what happens? Fucking Maggie shoves her head underwater again. So that's not terrifying at all. <sighs> So yeah, especially uh, if you've never had like an older sibling that liked to do that to you, this is also why I stopped swimming for a very long time and why I, I do have a bit of water phobia sometimes because I have an older brother who thought that was hilarious. Like, let's pretend to make my little sister drown. It's so funny. Uh, um, hilarious. Oh. Yeah. But okay. So, so yeah, this finally, bitch is like, yeah, go ahead. Somebody. So finally we, there's something that you kind of hear this like, 
eerie voice calling Margaret right when Sam's able to break the glass and jump into the pool. Um, he's carrying Tyler out of the water in his arms and it's all very, very slow-mo, right? And Dean and Susan get to the pool edge and I'm like, oh, fuck. I was like, this is going slow-mo and the music's really sad. I'm like, if they kill this little girl, I'm going to be fucking pissed. I get the show. Just saying. They didn't. No, she's not um, dead. But also nobody attempted CPR. Like, no, this, no, is, this is the don't. time like where it's appropriate. Like, you've got water in your yeah. lungs. Like, and, and they're all just like, oh, she's not moving. I'm like, y'all, like, Push, push on her diaphragm, turn her head to the side, like any basic thing, but they did not. Any basic first aid. Like, so you go through all this ghost hunting thing and you don't learn basic first aid. Like, come on. And like, Susan, you can kill a demon, but you can't do CPR. Susan, you're a mom. Like, and you have a pool. You didn't learn CPR. And you run a hotel. Yeah. Fuck you, Susan. (laughs) Oh, so annoying. Anyway, so Dean asked when, and then Maggie recovers very quick, or I'm sorry, Susan recovers. I can't say the right kid's name. Tyler recovers Tyler. very quickly. And Dean asks her if Maggie's around. And she's like, no, she's gone. So where has she gone to? Oh, we cut to uh, Rose again and Maggie, where apparently Rose was somehow calling Maggie through the house using some of her powers she remembered. Yeah. And basically, even though Rose can't talk through Maggie's talking conversing with her we piece together that rose has offered to to her life to stay behind so the others could leave and there's just just really weird we're like i thought you didn't love me like maggie was saying like weird shit and she does like a creepy like caress of rose's face (laughs) oh little sister and so yeah yeah so anyways yeah we get that so i go to the next day so rose rose did Rose dead. Um, she gets taken away. Uh, so I guess we have the scene where they, you know, they all come in and then, you know, they're, yeah. they're everything's okay. And then Susan goes up, well, you just gotta get grandma. And then, yeah. ah! Yeah. Screaming. She dead. Yeah. She gets taken away in a coroner's van. Yeah. And then we get back the to- The coroner's just doesn't speak out at this point. They're just yeah. like, oh, we're going like, back. Yeah, just, just, let's make our daily trip over there now. And so um, Tyler insists that Maggie isn't around anymore. And then um, Susan uh, has a weird moment where she gives Sam like a really, really big hug. But I'm very confused why they're getting like this novelty vintage taxi cab. (laughs) Well, I was just like, uh, my thought was that the car was too possessed for her to get in. She's like, I'm not, because I'd be like, not like in the car anymore. It drove by itself. I'm like most taxis are like a fucking like Ford Taurus, not like a 57 Bel Air. I don't, not, I'm not saying that's what this was. I didn't look it up, but like it was just very bizarre to me. I'm like, well, oh, it's, it's a very fun. small pier, wherever the fuck this inn was. It's a very small <laughs> town. Piedmont, Piedmont, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. It just, it was, like, I just cracked me up. I'm like, huh, vintage, novelty vintage taxi cab. Cool. All right. But um, yeah, even if we try and take the vintage ca- taxi service in the Hill Country, we always end up with like a minivan. So. <laughs> Yeah, because they're trying to be cute with vintage being the wine vintage, not the car vintage. But yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I figured that out after the fact. Sorry. There you go. It took me. Thank you. Today I learned. Today I learned. I was six days old when I learned about that fun. <laughs> so Dean points out to Sam that he had saved, he saved, you know, Susan and, and uh, Tyler, obviously. Um and hopes that uh he dean's really just hoping that sam was too fucking drunk to remember their weird talk but he wasn't so um he really insists that he he meant what he said about dean having to take him out if he needs to wasn't that drunk yeah you were sam you would not remember that but okay and then, and then we end up with an, a creepy scene about i think it's weird they're moving out and apparently they have all their shit but they left behind like all the family photos yeah, all the photos are still there. Like at this hotel has not been packed at all. The, like they no. like Susan took her underwear and that was yeah. it. She's she got her toiletry bag and like her panties. That's it. There's nothing yeah. else that they've packed. And um, so it's you, there's a zoom in on that photo again of Rose with the nanny, and then you see um, ghost sisters playing uh, like jump ropes, trying to buy creepy dolls. Yep. So now there's two creepy ghost children with their fucking dolls, and somehow the dolls are all repaired. And so burn that place to the fucking ground. Whoever is going to like go and redo this, yeah, yeah, you just salt there, burn it, salt the earth. 
Well, we're, we're hopefully they're still, maybe they're still going to demolish no, it. They, Who knows? But, but leave the pool house because the pool house is really awesome. And maybe the bar. You can have the pool house and the bar. Uh, you can burn the wedding dress in the wall because we don't need the HGTV run out for that. But, you know. It's creepy. Well, see, and this could combine my favorite concept of HGTV mixed with paranormal shows. So they <sighs> have to go in, they have to clear the ghosts out, and then read you the hotel to become hotel rescue. And so now we get in there and we just have like the most amazing like TV show ever. There you go. Patent. You can't do that without paying me. Just saying right now. That was my idea. <laughs> I feel like HGTV is going to be beating, I, beating down our door in the near future. The damn well better be. Discovery Plus, if you do this without my consent, like right now, I'm telling you, I copyrighted that shit. On record. Tra On trademark. Record. Done. Uh, On record. Uh, so that was a creepy doll episode. Yeah. Yay! Creepy, fucking, creepy fucking dolls. God damn it. I hope the next one doesn't have creepy dolls in it. I don't know. Maybe there's like every episode now. From now on, it's only creepy dolls. That is the entire that fifteen years. So fifteen years of supernatural <laughs> and creepy dolls. That's that's all they do. Every episode from now on, uh, they, they just go like through through Etsy and they just keep buying like different dolls and they just keep haunting different houses. Uh, well, I mean, I realized the odds were low of that being the case for the next episode too, but I just had to say it anyway just in case like maybe one of those dolls hidden hidden the hidden baby and it's just like there, like riding up like that that should have been like the parting shot which is a doll hanging out to the trunk as it's driving off just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> like oh, you were free <laughs> oh my god it, it, that that doll no. spirit it's not bringing you light and joy <laughs> no it is not uh, I, I do like as much as i hate good vibrations Good yeah, as much as I like hate creepy dolls, I do love the idea of like a creepy doll with a knife running around places. I don't know why that brings me joy, but I, I did miss one of my other um uh casting notes that I just want to point out really briefly. I'm sorry. Yeah. Was that Rose was played by um Brenda McDonald, who was also an elf, <laughs> which I'm amused by, and was also in Sabrina. Uh, the original or the redo? I read him. She was in Chilling Adventures. Hmm. Who was she in Chilling Adventures? Um, those I can't remember. Read my hand. Right. Those Mel. Those those Melda. And then, oh, she and was. Then, a, she also played Crown in that. Just shocking. Uh, yes. But no, and she was really she good. She was also um, uh, a reoccurring character, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Leach on X Files. Um. Yeah. X Files is further back in my mind. But. I know. I don't. I, it's, it's like unless it's a super prominent character, I'm not gonna remember it offhand. But I thought that was interesting. Sorry. So we had two. Like we had. I thought those were some good ones, though. We got two people from Elf. Yeah. Oh, and we so got my lovely, my Lily. I know, uh, Lily Salvatore. Uh, the, the worst mom in history. Mm -hmm. Ugh, well, I'm sure there's no. worse, but she, I mean, she's she, pretty bad. She, she was not a good mom. She just wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and the cat's coming in to say hi to everybody. Hey, cat. Aww. All right, on that Get your note, face out of my wine. That wine is not way too expensive for a cat. Get your own cat wine. Uh, any other parting shots on the episode? That's all I got. All righty, then. Well, I think after all this time, a uh, long episode with a cat's tail wrapping around my face, I will say cheers, jerk. Cheers, bitch. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Devil's Trap Podcast, Twitter, Devil's Trap Pod, or you can email us, Devil's Trap at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews, and share it with all your friends. We're available at all your major podcast listening devices, or you can always find us at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Thanks. Devil's Trap Podcast is a don't be a dick production. Meow. Intro music, arrangement and performance by Dave Cox. Piano arrangement and performance by Bobby Orozco. Meow. <laughs>